welcome to the Dave It Yourself channel, the home of unique RC creations and unique RC views. Dave It Yourself, stick around. All right, friends, we're back. So I appreciate you uh, coming back and watching the rest of this particular video with me going ahead and assembling the bush mule and telling you my thoughts on this particular plane. So uh, let's go ahead and get into that a little bit. Uh, one of the things that uh, I is unfamiliar with uh, when buying this particular plane is that it does not come with a manual. <laughs> so the manual is online. So I have the manual here on the laptop and have my mouse here. So I'll be able to scroll through that and see what we need to do as far as all that. What I've done so far is just basically take everything out of the box, take everything out of the plastic, and basically give everything the once over and give it the view. I also have the FPV cockpit, and of course it comes with the skis as well, which I'm in North Georgia, probably won't get much chance to use those, I'm sure, but definitely the FPV cockpit. And then I have all the long parts and stuff here, and the screws, which are just a standard Phillips head, and I have my little drill driver to get those in, so we'll go with that. Uh, so some of my first impressions are again that this particular plane is absolutely beautiful. It's uh, very very cool. It's going to be a 1500 me uh, millimeter wingspan, which is going to be really nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, some of the things that are new to me, and again with the Navios, this is the first time I've ever seen this. But with the landing gear, both the main landing gear as well as the tail gear here, these are styrofoam wheels. So I've never had a plane that had styrofoam wheels they're just formed foam just like the wings and just painted black even the little skirt here is also styrofoam so this is all styrofoam styrofoam here the inserts are plastic uh, but the actual wheels themselves are styrofoam so that's interesting kind of sounds like a baby carriage <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that works out uh, they do I do not have I went to my hobby store they did not have a replacement that size made out of a foam or anything so uh, as of right now we're just gonna go with those and see how that works out so going through the um, manual a little bit here and let me go ahead and blow this up some a little bit make it a little easier for my old man eyes to see but here we go they got the bush mule nice looking manual and of course that's probably why it's online <laughs> but uh, get into the get past the precautions precautions <laughs> so okay so get into the introduction here and yeah, thank you for purchasing the bush mule talks about the upgrades I'm not going to go through all of this specifically uh, but it does have some uh, upgraded servo connectors repositioning in the gear brass threads upgraded propellers and the new color schemes so there you go uh, 2200 uh, 2250 grams flying weight and it will handle uh, 4S LiPo. 20 minutes, it says, on a 4S LiPo, 3,000 to 4,500. Uh, I'm sorry, 20C minimum rating. That's not 20 minutes. 20C minimum rating. <laughs> Duh! Okay, so let's get into here. We got the parts list out. So we got basically all the parts out of the plastic. Another thing which I'm unfamiliar with, which is interesting, is it looks like I'll probably have to cut these two pieces apart at some point since they're foamed together like that. So but if they do show that piece there and this kind of came crinkled like that so hopefully that's a part that's supposed to come off so we'll see about that okay so basically now we're at first thing in, as far as the instructions goes you're going to get into the vertical and horizontal tail surfaces first thing it does say is it says to flex all the control surfaces elevator and rudders and all that so we'll go into that uh, no control linkages on uh, the rudder here so just go ahead and give that a good little work over same thing with the elevator here. No control surface. All right, I'm sorry, no uh, control rod. One. All right, those feel good, not too loose. All right. All right. And then while we're at it, we'll go ahead and do the wings. These do have control rods on them. So we'll just make sure that these seem to move nicely. They do. That one seems to be all right. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, that one seems to be real smooth too. Check this one again. Yep, okay. Thought that one's a little stiffer, but I guess not. All right, so we went ahead and did that and attach the horizontal stabilizer and then insert the vertical stabilizer. Now it does say if you're not gonna worry about taking this plane apart so much, it does say um, 
to go ahead and apply some glue uh, to the stabilizer to make sure that you hook the uh, a uh, elevator to the body and all that and glue the rudder and all that stabilizer into the body as well. Um, I probably will do that. It does say use like an epoxy or a foam tack or something of that nature. Of course, I'm not an epoxy or foam tack guy. I am oh, a hot glue guy. So let me go ahead and plug that in. And we'll go ahead and get that going. Okay, so we'll let that warm up. So we'll do that here in a second, but let's go ahead and dry fit it. So from here, we'll go ahead and get take the body. And it does have a tab here. So we'll go ahead and stick that right into the plane like so. Okay. And then try to fit it in there. There we go. There we go. Okay. So there's that. And we'll go ahead and do the dry fit with the vertical stabilizer here. Which does seem to be. There we go. So we got that, we got that. All right, so that looks good. Here's your servo here for the rudder. All right, and then the next step is to, uh, if you have no need to remove these parts, here's where it talks about you can glue them on there. Uh, use the servo tester to center everything, what, but at this point, uh, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, it's a plug-and-play, so when I put the AR-636 or whatever receiver I'm going to put in there, probably from a previously crashed bird, um, I'll let the AS-3X and all that uh, settle up first, and then I'll adjust all that stuff. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. It does talk about using a little bit of a uh, hose, a little clip of hose to keep the hinge shut on the clevis, so I guess that means that these do not come with that. And let me take a look. Here's one here. Black. Nope. Nothing on there. Okay. So I'll keep that in mind. I probably have some of that somewhere. Here's the screw bag though. So let's see what else we got. We'll go ahead and scroll through here. Landing gear. Now insert the landing gear leg into the front mounting bracket. So now we're talking about the front gear. All right. So front mounting bracket. Let's see what we got with that. Okay. Hole running through there. Yep. Okay. So that looks like something you would do like this. All right. Obviously, there's going to be something there that needs to hold that wheel in. So we'll just set that there for now. All right. So insert the landing gear into the front mounting bracket. Centre <laughs> the nose wheel and tighten the grub screw. All right, so, and it does say a version two has the upgraded servo connection components. So let me take a look at that. And attach the main landing gear. Okay, so let's work on this front gear. It says that there's supposed to be some, there doesn't seem to be anything there that holds it in. And do I have anything in here? that has a grub screw on it. Does not seem to be the case. The landing gear leg into the front mounting bracket. Oh, oh, wait a minute, here we go. This is probably it right here. It's actually a little control arm. But this is it right here. Alright, yep, there's a grub screw there, yep, so that must be it, yep, and there's the servo, so that must be the arm for that, so, get my screwdriver for that grub screw, looks like it's a tiny one, it's tinier than that, there's no way it's tinier than this though, bingo bango, alright, so we'll go ahead and throw the arm on there and uh oh let me go ahead and set this back up like this and then huh I wonder if there's a specific way this wheel is supposed to go gotcha 
All right, so put this in there. And then, of course, the grub screw like that will turn it sideways. Go in from the front here and try to tighten that down. Get the front wheel turned sideways. Got the servo arm going pointing toward the tail. Now when I turn it front ways, the servo arm is now perpendicular to the servo. There we go. Alright, so there we go. We got the little servo. This is the new updated servo connector here. So it has this little arm that I just mounted on there. Here's the servo itself, so there'll be a linkage for that apparently. I might need to raise that up over this little foam bar here, but that's basically it. So we'll worry about that later. Right now let's just uh, get the parts installed and we'll worry about that other stuff. Alright, so we'll set that there like this. See how that's going? Alright, so we got that. This computer drawing that they have here is not ac very accurate. Um, maybe. Well, maybe it gives you a little... Maybe. Just very out of proportion. Uh, okay. And now it talks about getting the rear gear in. Now with the rear gear, or the main gear, on this particular new version of the plane, it has this really kick-ass decal going across the bottom. And let me make sure that I'm still recording. I am. All right, just want to make sure I'm still recording. So anyway, it has this really uh, kick-ass obvious decal going across the bottom. Here's the drop bay here. So this decal is going across that. They did, it looks like they may have, did they cut this here? Can't really tell. I can't, the, de the clear part of the decal actually runs over the door hinge there and just a tip here. And then of course the actual landing gear mount is here. So it looks like those aren't already pre-cut. So let me go ahead and do that. Hot glue gun's probably good as well. So let me go ahead and make these cuts first and then we'll then we'll get to uh, gluing and screwing. <coughs> All right, let's see what we got here. So a little simple straight cut there. Come down the door. Okay, that was already cut. And this little nib at the bottom's not really even touching. Okay, so it looks like it was just that main cut I had to do there. All right. Here are the screw ports for the two screws that need to go in there. Well, like I said, I got my glue gun gone, so let's get that together. Let's see what we got here. You help me out there, laptop? Thanks. All right, let's see what we got. All right, I'm not on high. I'm not on high heat, so I don't have to worry about melting nothing. All right, and we don't need a lot of glue here anyway. Just a touch. All right, so we'll go ahead and dismantle that part and pull this part out and we'll just do a little something simple like this oh actually running out of a little glue there well ain't that something replacement stick nice and close one hand refill boom all right just a little something something nothing crazy And seat it, press it, hold it, sing a little song in your head, like, uh, I don't know, the only song that's coming to my head right now is Crazy Mary by Pearl Jam. Now it's in your head. <laughs> anyway, all right, there we go. And repeat the same process up here. Make sure to stay away from the screw holes. So we'll do a little, do a little like that, and a little like this. Just a little some some, very thin bead. Doesn't doesn't need to be much here. I'm not going to be doing crazy acrobatics with this thing. And then push and hold, and then sing a little song in your head. <laughs> uh, now I'm thinking, ah. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, but no specific song. Make it easy on me. All right, so there's that. All right, so let's go ahead and 
learn from the previous experience with the Cessna 150 and go ahead and get those screws put in. All right, clear off the little glue gun spider webs if any appear. All righty. So it's going to be these two long ones that are the smaller of the long ones with the flat heads. Let's see what we got here. Drop that in. Drop that in. There we go. And then nice and easy. That's not uh, not in line with that hole below there. That one is, but this one is just off of here. And it's going in either two sideways or not sideways enough. I think that might be seating there. Let's see. There it goes. Come on. Now. All right. So that just does not want to seat in there just yet. I'm trying to. Let's push it through. Leave the hole. Let's see if that does. I know it's in the hole now. Huh. That was a tough one. That does not seem to want to go in there. Okay, so it seems like it's missing both of those holes. What the hell? No, it's, it's connected somewhere. One arm's connected. It ain't letting it go. Maybe these threads are just super thin. Take something off. Yeah, I guess just, yeah, that one's catching. This threads are just super thin. Yeah. Alright, well. I'll tell you that. Front one's in. It's just back one. It's really being a wicket there. I even had it stuck in a hole. I didn't get it through in that hole, so. That's just like a whole snap. That is just really weird. Alright, let me take a look at the... Maybe the bit on that is just too big. Let me try. Something like this. Yeah, it's definitely counting some sort of resistance, but... That's really weird. Okay, well, the screw is certainly spinning. It's not like I ripped the face of the head off or anything. But it just doesn't want a seat. Alright, obviously, let's go the fridge, man. This thing even has a self tapping head on it, so. <laughs> what the what? Let's try this again. Dude, I can't tell you what the heck's going on here. I mean, I'm clearly turning the screw, but it just doesn't seem like it wants to go anywhere. Dude, this is, this is the wackiest thing ever. Why won't you go in the hole? <laughs> this is how I think Gilmore would say, get in the hole! Let's see if I can hold it with these pliers and get it in there. Yeah, it just does not seem to want to go in that hole. I don't know what the heck. I can't tell you what the heck's going on here. Maybe? Uh-oh. Finally. Goodness gracious pants. <coughs> that was redonkulous. That was way more unnecessary than it needed to be.
Goodness gracious. Well, there we go, folks. Ah, that, that one screw just would not go in there. And like I said, it's even got a point on it. It's self-tapping, so when you're using a drill like this, it should just push it right in there. It's just plastic, for goodness sake. Okay, but anyway, it's got plastic caps in there. It seems to be sat in there. We'll call that a deal. All right, let's get this rear gear in, or the main gear. Go ahead and do this. And push it right through the decal. Easy peasy, breakfast sneezy. All right. I would get my plane stand here, but I got the chair and the laptop. All right, so here we go. Let's move on to putting these pieces in. Looks like we have just the two white gear holders, and then looks like we're going to probably have four screws that will have flat heads on them, I would assume. One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Okay. We will just use, give these the old hand job. And of course, these have a little little bit of a tab right here at the bottom, uh, like a T, but with a short leg on it. And that, of course, make sure you set that properly and that it pushes down into the gear. There we go. And that will help make sure that the gear is properly set. So just push it down with the gear there. Work it in there if you gotta. There we go. All right. All right, so now we'll go ahead and get these screws in. Oh, those are also a little tough. Maybe we won't give it the hand job. I'm not a huge fan of these Phillips head screws only because uh, they're cheap. And even though they're self tapping, they do not do a very good job self tapping. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh, these things are way too hard. That is unnecessary. That is unnecessary for them to be that hard to get in there. All right, friends. There we go, main gear in now starting to come together a little bit. I'm starting to get a little idea of what we're working with here. Okay. Move the hot glue off to the side. All right. So main gear's in, front gear's in. Main wing section pieces houses the motors, yep. Boom. So basically this will just be one of those. Get the wires connected right. Looks like these right here. The 
This one says elevator. This one says rudder. And then this one says cabin. So, okay. Let's see what we got here. Got ourselves something that needs to be cut off, it looks like. Alrighty. Easy peasy. Don't cut the wire, it's cheesy. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. And then you got connections for your throttle. Two connections for your throttle, one for your flaps, one for your lamps, and one for the aileron. Here's the reverse switch, and here's the battery lead for the single battery. All right. So here we need to worry about I guess the cabin, there's nothing here that's marked cabin, so we'll go through that here. So, and then the other thing is, we'll turn it this way to so be able to utilize that function. But we do have this little side door here to help with those connections. So, let's put the connections in there. Plastic pins in the front, so front goes in first, sets into the plastic pins. We'll probably move it over here now. So, there we go. And then we should have those other two long screws that did not have the flat heads. Here we go. We're right here. These are probably the nicest two screws in the entire kit. <laughs> or at least they appear that way. To, and I have a backup screwdriver in my pocket just for that reason. There we go. All right, so there we go with that. So we'll do the wiring in here in a bit. Move these. The next thing will be. Getting into the wing sections here, which have these really nice screw sliders that just screw it in. And then they have the pins, the uh, aluminum struts that go into the wing itself. So that's pretty cool. But at this point, let's take a look and see what we got. Okay. There's the props. nose, little snoopy nose, let's see here, this thing's a little light on the front, so let me go drop a nice heavy magnet up front here, just to hold it down, there we go, alright, so then getting back into the book, which you can't see now, but it talks about putting the props on, which I'm not going to necessarily worry about doing that so much now, but I guess I can put them on. I don't have to do anything too crazy there. There we go. It's a pretty sweet. Uh, spinners are plastic. Just like everything else on this plane, including the tires. 
You know, it's not plastic or the screws, which, you know, that's debatable. And the uh, control arms. So. I didn't even look to see if I got the props on right, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be testing it right now anyway. Just want to kind of get it assembled. Here are the struts. Here are those wing pins I was talking about. So those would go here. Of course, you get your servos and stuff here that you would want to connect. Which I'm not going to worry about doing that right now. Put that other one in. And from there, your wings should slide right on. Of course, you got the servos leads in the way, but. So there's that. And that. Of course, you got to tuck your wires in. That's basically that. And then, of course, you got the two little winglets here. I'll try to see if I can see what those are for. Kind of zip down through the manual some more here. Okay, it talks about having the props on. Now it's talking about putting the struts on, which we'll do. And then where do these little winglets go? Well, now it's talking about the throws, center of gravity, which is right around here it says 50 50 to 60 millimeters from the leading edge uh you know what i'm not exactly sure what these are for yet they're not actually on the plane itself in the photo so i'm not sure what those are for it talks about hints optional skills um well that is a great question i let me see. I know these are part of the parts kit, so let's see if it says what these are called. Okay, number 10. Auxiliary fins for use with optional float set. Ah, okay. Auxiliary fins for the float set. Okay. So, I don't have the float set for this. I do have other float sets, which I can probably easily convert to this. But at this point, I think what I'll do is just open up the FPV bag a little bit here and go ahead and put these in there. Alright. So there we go, folks. So there you go. There's basically the obvious bush mule. I still need to mount this stuff, which I'll do, but I won't bore you with that anymore. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a basic idea as to the size of this plane, how it looks. It's got the lights on the wings, the lights here. Still got to put my control rods on. Still got to obviously do the wheel. Um, the side hatch is pretty sweet. I uh, also have the uh, drop bay here, which I'm going to be using to drop the, the tokens uh, for the giveaway. And um, show you those tokens real quick. Maybe. Yeah, here we go. It's a Dollar General. So here's the plan. I was thinking about using ping pong balls, but I have 61 individuals that are registered for the F-15. And I can't get, and that's just individuals, not to mention the fact that some of them are going to get their names in there multiple times because they've had other people subscribe. So I couldn't have almost 100 balls in this plane. But what I can have almost 100 of is little party favor coins. They're all the same size. They just come in gold and silver. I'm going to lay them all out on a piece of poster board, spray paint one side of them white, write people's, write the according number for the subscriber inside there, and then drop these out of the bay. And since they're silver and gold, they should flit occur really nice as they come down to the ground. And if for some reason I happen to get a bunch more subscribers here in the next day or two, I got plenty. So you guys go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, try to get in on this. I've hit 500 subscribers. The plan now is to get this thing finalized, put together, get the AR-636 or whatever it is I'm going to put in here, get it all booted up, ready to roll with safe and all that, get it out there for some test flights, get it out there for some test flights with the coins in it, and then from there, once we can make sure that all of that seems like it's going to work, 
then we're going to go ahead and do the video where we're dropping the painted coins and the numbered coins into a target from the obvious bush mule and inside that circular target there's going to be a wooden skewer and whoever's coin is closest to that skewer is going to win that brand spanking new arrows at 15. so that's what i'm thinking at this point uh so far that noodle is almost cooked and should stick against the wall here soon so we're just going to test that the main thing was to get the obvious bush mule together so we could at least start with that particular plan. So I got all the tools, I got the plane, I got the 500 plus subscribers not at this point, so now it's time to get rid of one of those planes out of my inventory and fulfill my dream of being a foam lanthropist and giving foam away for free. So if you like that and you like the obvious bush mule and you wanna see this thing finally come together and actually take off and do its deal with these styrofoam wheels and stuff, uh, well then, you know, you know, recommend that you do. You stick around to this channel because I've got a lot more coming. So to recap, obvious bush mule beautiful things that i was kind of eh about was the fact that the manual is online i normally like to have a book to put in my file uh styrofoam wheels a little wacky but we'll see how that works i do know at least with the styrofoam wheels um it shouldn't have any problem in grass taller grass so that's nice because nothing that these things won't have any drag so that ought to be interesting so i'm sure i'll like those when it's all said and done but getting it together and all that, and then the final assembly with the wing tips and all, I think that'll be cool. I uh, kind of wish that the actual wing connectors themselves uh, had the fast servo connectors, like you do see on some of the E-Flight stuff, and then you just pop that in and screw it. I do like the fact that this is the vertical stabilizer uh, to go in there to kind of help with the flexing and twisting, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, as far as the whole putting the servo leads together when you get to the field and all that not a, not a not horrible but you know obviously not as easy as it could be as well and then of course gotta get the struts on but it'd be interesting to see what i could do with these skis and we don't really get a lot of snow here in north georgia uh but you know maybe get this thing to take off from some grass and skim across some water that would be cool so we'll see how that works out and of course you got to put the fpv canopy on so there you go there's the plan for the bush mule there's the plan to try to get rid of that extra arrows 15 i have in my inventory and that is basically the assembly of this particular plane hardest parts getting those two screws into the tail from underneath there even though i had that one screw in the hole it just would not go in the hole so that was kind of a bummer um and then again the landing gear screws going in uh, a couple of them went in okay a couple of the other ones not so great so i don't know if it's the cheap screws um or whatnot but nonetheless that was the only major problem that i had there but everything else looks good fit and finish looks good this plane definitely is going to need to have some mod podge on it uh, to go ahead and keep it nice and stiff and keep everything for nice and smooth plus it probably should fly a little bit faster so next time you see this plane i'll have all the control rods on i'll have it mod podged up and we'll get it ready to do some testing so if you want to see exactly how that happens i recommend that you stick around i recommend that you subscribe and i recommend if you don't mind i would really appreciate it and i beg for you to please hit that like button while you're here and until next time I am Dave. That's the Abios Bush Mule version 2. That's the Arrows F15 I'm giving away. Well, the new one in the box. And until next time, me and my shenaniganery, we're out of here.